So your parents, your mother came out with you to Hollywood and- Yeah, was, yeah, my mom came out with me, um, which is unbelievable. Um, <laughs> I thank her all the time. Tell her, I love you, thank you so much for doing that. I really, yeah, I know it was difficult. It was very stressful. LA is a very hard city to move to and yeah. um, the traffic and getting to me to auditions. And uh, it was just a lot. So, uh, so I thank her all the time and also my father who, would come out once a month and was helping out and very supportive of the whole um, endeavor. So it was really a, uh, it's still unbelievable. I, I thank them all the time. You been drinking tonight? Oh, good. I just had a couple of beers. <laughs> yeah, I want a couple of beers, okay? It's in the garbage bags. They're uh, the clippings from the yard. My parents just got divorced and I, I can't really sleep, so I um, just do yard work and I uh, was gonna drop them at the dump. You're 18, is that right? Yeah. So you got your whole life ahead of you. you turn this car around and drive your ass home. Welcome to the actor's side today. Well, first of all, he is an Emmy winner for Mayor of Easttown. If you haven't seen that, check that out for sure. And uh, of course, a uh, Golden Globe winner recently uh, for uh, Dahmer, playing Dahmer in the Jeffrey Dahmer story. So many other things. X-Men uh, uh, X -Men, uh, fans are uh, going to be excited here because we have Quicksilver as well. Uh, please welcome Evan Peters. Hi. Hi, Pete. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Congratulations on all of this that's been happening in your young career here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty surreal hearing you say that. When you came, where did you come from to come to L.A., to come to Hollywood? Um, St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, from originally. Missouri. Yeah. And you just came out here and, you know, like so many say, I'm going to get into the movies, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, um, pretty out there uh, thing to do at 15. I don't... At 15? Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking, quite honestly. What um, motivates you at 15 to do that? Were, were you just like a natural actor and you knew it? <sighs> I had a couple things. I really, I, I, I always loved movies and TV. Uh, they, they were always incredibly affecting uh, for me and, and, and changed the way I moved and thought and, and, and looked at the world. And I would, you know, be obsessed with these characters. And um, so I, I really love movies and TV. And I, I, I wanted to see what it would be like to be inside of them and right. kind of experience <laughs> what that would be like. Uh, so that was that was a huge uh, motivator for me, and um, and I also at fifteen really wanted to meet the Olsen twins. <laughs> I thought I thought okay that'll be you know then I'll know I've made it and it'll be wow. great. So um, yeah. Did you meet them? Uh, I I did end up <laughs> meeting Ashley at one point. Um, oh, cool. And she was she was great, and it was uh, a very very surreal experience. I, I'll bet it was. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you get an agent or how did that work or I, I did I, I um I I it was I was at a so so we were in St. Louis Missouri and then my dad got a job in Michigan so we moved to Michigan for a year in the summer of uh, 2001 and then um, I got involved in in the Flint New Theater and a local agency there oh, yeah. and um, just started started acting and, and started going to classes and, and, and learning about it. And um, and a photographer there saw me um, in this acting coach's class and said, do you want me to take you, you know, do a monologue for a, a manager out in L.A.? And I said, yeah, definitely. That would be amazing. So I put myself on tape and fortunately he uh, liked it and wanted me to come out. And he said, do you want to come out to L.A. and start auditioning? And, well, and I said, Mom. Dad, I, re <laughs> I really want to go do that, and uh, and that was sort of the the beginning of it all. 
That's great. On yeah. stage, I know I read you did Oliver. You played Fagin in something. Yes, yeah, I, I was asked very you young that though. because that yeah. ended my acting career in high school. I really? was a senior, and I, oh, no. I was throwing off the chorus even in in the music, and so they gave me this part of Noah Claypole, which was one scene, and then I'd sit backstage and wait for the curtain call, and that was it. <laughs> so that was it for me. But I yeah. was impressed when I read you got to play the lead. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was fun. It was the, the picking pockets of it all, I think, was I was most excited about. <laughs> it was really kind of fun to learn that. So on these auditions, you got a job right away. I mean, in actor terms, that's like a dream. That's like the Hollywood dream in a weird that way. Was, that was pretty surreal. That was kind of a blessing and a curse because I, I got it. And it, it really helped my parents and me to sort of be like, OK, well, maybe maybe there's something out here. You know, I, maybe we could do this. And then... I very quickly learned that I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of trial by fire. And um, it was it was a great experience, and everybody was amazing, and it was so cool to be on a set and be inside of the movie. So it was yeah. uh, a really awesome experience. But um, but yeah, I learned a, I learned a lot on that one. You you sure did. I mean, and you have a hell of a resume. I mean, just it, on American Horror Story alone playing all of those different yeah. characters uh, year after year after year. That must have been fun and also great. Great to be in a series where you get to play different characters. It, it, yes, I have to say I was very right. We did season one and it was a, a huge blessing and I was so grateful and, and, and I didn't know if there was gonna be a season two or what they were gonna do. And Ryan called me and he said, I want you. I want. I want to do a season two, but I, it's going to be like an anthology, and you're going to play a different character every year. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding?" Like, <laughs> yes, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I can. That sounds amazing. And I was um, very excited because I. I think I. You know, a lot of my favorite actors are always trying to do different things and not be pigeonholed. So right. it was uh, a real opportunity to try to to explore that and do that, and also. <laughs> Again, it was kind of trial by fire of not really knowing what I was doing at times and sort of learning as I went along about how to craft a character and what's too much and what's too little <laughs> and kind of like figuring that out as I went along. So it was, uh, yeah, a real, a real adventure. Do you, do you have a coach, an acting teacher or anybody that worked with you on that and helped you along in... Yeah. I've had a lot of different acting coaches over the yeah. years um, and a lot of I read a lot of different books and um, I would say I'm 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 sort of a, a smorkish board of of of, of different techniques uh, and, really? and what it, I, I don't really know what it is anymore. It's sort of taken on so, something completely different. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think the more that I that I worked with coaches, the more I realized that it there is no. <laughs> I always, I always say this, and it's so embarrassing. Please sponsor me, Reese's. Uh, I always say there's no wrong, wrong way to eat a Reese's, and and I keep telling myself that because I get really hyper fixated on I'm doing it the wrong way. This isn't the way that I was taught. Or I need to do it this way. Or this isn't right. And then you get so uh, convoluted that you just sort of, at the end of the day, go, you know, I don't even know what it is anymore. And and sometimes when I when I find myself going, I don't know that seems to be a good place to be in for some reason, because then you sort of forget everything and, and get in touch with your instincts and start to, uh, to operate um, on a subconscious level or something. So it's, it's, very, it's very strange. Do you find yourself out there in real life actually having Reese's and trying to figure out how to eat it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has it gotten Unfortunately, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've done a lot of commercials, so I imagine I have. You, had to, you had to deal with that in real time with commercials that you did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was fun. I, I remember specifically there was this Papa John's commercial <laughs> and I was like playing the guitar and it was like it was so fun and it was so intense. I think I think it was I was like. Well, this isn't a very good story. Maybe I'll just stop telling it. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no, you've got to continue telling the Papa John story now because she no, doesn't like is. to edit. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not a good story. It's not a good story. It's not worth okay, it. Okay, I I, we're never going to get the Papa John story. But, <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs>
I was telling you before we started this, uh, Mayor of Easttown was just an extraordinary show. And Thank I'm not you. surprised that you all won Emmys for acting. It was a, it was Thank really you. amazing. Uh, Thanks. And I bet that was doubly amazing to work with Kate Winslet. Uh, <laughs> Man, that was that was amazing. That really was amazing. That was a dream come true. And and she exceeded every expectation and and really I learned so much just being on the set with her. And, and that's really, I was so excited to go to work uh, for that very reason. And, 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 and again, that exceeded every expectation too. She, she was so in tune with all of the details that needed to be done and, and with the writing and, and honestly, uh, just, just so compassionate towards every person on that set and, and really brought an amazing energy and was an incredible leader and and I thought, wow, it's it's she's not only is she one of the best, if not the best actress, at, at, then then she's also such an amazing human being and goes the extra mile to make sure everybody is comfortable and OK and, and the sets operating properly and everything's amazing. So I, I, I continually think about her and, and try to be more like her <laughs> because yeah. she's so uh, fantastic. Do people come up to you? I mean, that character really hit hit the zeitgeist for a lot of people. <laughs> um, I, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to give away everything, but there's something about Colin, that character, that people just related to, you know? I, I don't, I don't know. I, it's, um, it was, uh, you know, he's a very normal guy. It was, it was, mm -hmm. it was kind of nice to play a very normal guy, right. um, you know, um, going through sort of normal issues. And, and I felt like, um, you know, there was something interesting about working with Kate, who, who is so amazing at what she does. Right. And, and as a, as, you know, her, her character as well as a detective is amazing at what she does and sort of operates, you know, by the seam of her pants and like in this gray area and, and very intuitively. Yeah. And I was sort of coming into that, that role in that series very like you know black and white like it has to be done this way it's got to be this and i'm very like by the book and trying to get it all right and perfect i mean i'm working with kate lindsay i can't mess this up you know like i'm like freaking out and and it very much lent itself to the character i think in that he was trying to be the best detective he possibly could yeah. and at the end of the day looked up to mayor and kate and i felt like it was a real um surreal experience because I, I, I got to learn from the actress and Zabel got to learn from the detective and it became this um, admiration which sort of turned into, uh, you know, a, an affection uh, and wanting a little bit more than that. And then tragically, um, you know, he's, well, spoiler alert, but he's taken, you know, very, yeah. very quickly and Just suddenly. Just out of the, ser out of the uh, series, uh, yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah, yes. you know, I mean, that's, and that's the way it, it, it can happen sometimes. And it mm -hmm. felt very real and tragic. And, um, you know, it's, it's sort of senseless and uh, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. So it felt... Uh, yeah, just just sort of tragic. And, and there are things that you as an actor, having read the script before you're doing this, know that's going to happen to your character. Yeah. You have to be careful. You yeah. know, when, uh, isn't that a somewhat of a challenge when you're doing roles like that? Yeah, it is. Um, that was one thing that was kind of, uh, I don't want to say fun, but it was something to think about as we were sh crafting the character. Uh, originally, the character was very much a hot shot. You know, I like, kind of like playing pool really well and doing <laughs> trick shots and like it's kind of slick and, you know, by the book, but very um, confident. And I thought, I don't I don't know, you know, like, first of all, I'm not really feeling that. And then second of all, I think that it 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 sort of lends itself to a guy who who changes, you know, he's at the beginning this one thing and then he learns from air and, and becomes really affected by her and then grows as a detective and a person and can stand up to his mom. And then um, just when he's about to get going, you know, then he's taken. And I think it makes it more effective. I think it makes yeah. it more tragic and, and sadder that way, as opposed to, you know, seeing this guy who sort of had it all together in the beginning. So. Um, yeah, it was it was an interesting thing. It's working backwards from that was very, very helpful. So you've worked with Ryan Murphy a lot. 
Uh, you also <laughs> were in Pose, which is a great show, and, and yeah, different thanks. things. And then he comes to you and wants you to play Jeffrey Dahmer, and that is an iconic name that the minute you hear it, people have an opinion. Um, but it's not the first time you played a serial killer. Uh, no. you, you actually have played a serial killer before. Yes. Um, <laughs> there were a few in, in, in season seven. Uh, I had to do some, some research on, um, I think Mr. Mr. March was a serial killer. Um, you know, I, it, it's, to me, it was just, it was going to be, it was going to be very, very different because the tone of it was different and um, the message of the piece was very different. Way different. Well, this is about justice. This is about, yeah. uh, when you hear the Jeffrey Dahmer story, it's the story also of a lot of people unheard, left behind, Yeah. any n way you want to do it. And you're also a producer on this project too, so it's important that that message gets across that this isn't just about the heinous, heinous things that he did. Yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah. that's the main reason that I signed on to do it. I, I, I read it and I was shocked and, and, and my jaw dropped and I, it was sort of in stunned disbelief really the whole time that I was reading it and shooting it and really hung on to that feeling um, to try to just show what a tragedy it was that the system failed um, on multiple occasions right. to stop this man uh, because of prejudice and 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 I felt like I had sort of sworn off playing darker characters and bad guys but because of that I thought okay all right now this will be the last one and I'll, and I'll give everything I got to this one and 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 do the best job I possibly can and I believe in the series and um, and yeah so and but it was it really was a, a, a tonally I told Ryan in the beginning I said you know it's it we have to be I don't, we have to be very careful about not going into a horror story type situation. Like right. I, I, yeah. I, I want to, I hope, I hope this can be something that's almost hyper realistic and very still. And, and, and our editing department was so incredible yeah. on this. I, I'm very, I, I was blown away by what they could do and what they did. And, um, just the, 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 the methodical sort of hypnotic pacing of it and letting things play out in real time, I felt was um, just just lent itself to the gravity of, of, of what the piece was. And I, I was really excited to be a part of that. You had to do a lot of, you, you mentioned research on your other things when you played a serial killer, but in him, there's a lot of footage of him and yeah. things like that. And so did you really, I'm going to find out your acting process now that you don't know <laughs> what it is. But <laughs> so what's your process in going through all of that saying, am I going to imitate him? Am I not going to imitate him? Am I going to be exactly what he was or what do you uh, Yeah, that was tough. I, it was, <laughs> it was really just taking in as much as I possibly could. And I had about four months to prep for this. So I thought, all right, I'm going to, and, and it, I watched the Dateline Oh yeah. Interview with Stone Phillips before I'd even signed on and after I watched it I thought, okay, I gotta start working on this now. Yeah. You know, even before I, I did it. And um and that's basically what I did. I watched a lot of him and, 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 and read as many books and articles, timelines, confessions, FBI files, all that, and uh and watched as much as I could of of, of the real Jeffrey Dahmer and, and I, I I tried to listen to him uh, and I, I worked with a dialect coach and, um, you know, then created this 45 minute audio composite I'd listen to every day to try to get in the mindset and hear the accent and, and, yeah. and figure out what was going on. Um, yeah, the physicality of him is he's it's, kind of a unique guy. He's a, way. yes, he is. He, he, <laughs> he moves differently. He's got yeah. a very straight back and he doesn't move his arms when he walks and, um, the way that he talks, he's very docile and seem seemingly very normal. Um, um, but but can spaz out and, and do uh, it's he's just a very odd guy and and I think it was it was a combo of trying to you know you don't want to completely imitate him because then right. it just becomes that and 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 it, so it was difficult to somehow um, bring myself into it and figure out what the different levels of that were. Um, and, and, and again, I think it was really just going back to the text 
and the scripts, which were beautifully written, and the scenes, which were um, very complicated, um, and, but, but knew what they wanted uh, from the actors. So I felt like that was a real guiding light um, to, to sort of take all of the research and characterization and physicality and everything and sort of sift it into what was going to be needed on the day um, and, then, and then work on that so that all of that stuff was second nature. I think that was really how, how I operated on it. DC Nash has gone on any show you want to mention and said, <laughs> when I met him, he was not nice and all this stuff. And, you know, and then I, was, I found I out it was, it was his nice. process <laughs> that you stayed in character. That's what she says. Did you stay in character the entire time? On <laughs> it, You know, I always, I always laugh at that because I always find it, it's, it's like, it's, you know, you're confronted by everything, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't know that he was just shy of the mark, right? Or is it his close up? You know, it's so it's you're confronted on all stages that you are shooting something, and 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 it, it is a, a project that there are a hundred other people working together on. Yeah. Um, so I, I think for me, what it what it was is that Nisi is hilarious and amazing <laughs> and a lovely, beautiful person, yeah. and is so warm. And she was like, "Hi, how are you?" And I was like, oh, "I'm good, I'm good, I'm good," and because I didn't. I was nervous about all of our scenes are in contention. Right. And I was nervous because I was like, oh man, if I start really talking to her and liking her, then then I'm it's going to be, you know, 10 times more difficult to play this. So I it was, you know, it was, good morning, how are you? Okay, cool, cool. And then we'd rehearse and then I'd go off and finish getting ready and we'd shoot it. Um, but you know, now that now that we're doing press and we're talking and getting to know each other, it's it's been amazing that we can actually, you know, bond and and uh, <laughs> which is <good. laughs> yeah, little bonus out of that. that yeah. uh, you got a new friend. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an extraordinary performance, and uh, you're you're getting a lot of acclaim and nominations. And and how, what does that mean to you? I mean, you won the Emmy, uh, you know, for Mayor. I bet you weren't expecting it when you went into that role and things. What is that like to get that kind of uh, attention? It's 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 incredibly surreal. I, I have to say, it really is. It's a, um, you know, it's it's really to me. It's about. I don't know. It's just always amazing to be recognized by your peers. It feels really great. Um, it's not, you know, there's there's many projects and things that that I've been on, and and it's it's really about. It's really about the work and, and dedicating yourself and finding happiness and peace within that. Yeah. And then and then if if you get lucky enough, like because you just never know, right. you know, <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, but if you get lucky enough that people see it and recognize it and, and, and you you get something like that, it, it really is. It's a it's a dream come true. And it's it's amazing. So it, it, it's a, it's really an honor, it truly and surreal again. So Surreal. what's next? A lot of people say, I want to be in the Marvel movie, but you've already been in a Marvel movie. So. I'd be in another Marvel movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, I think this really, you know, Dahmer was really, really the last sort of dark character yeah. that I'm going to play for, for an extended period of time. So it was sort of a send off to that and that, that, that time of, of working hard on things like that. And um, now I'm going to try to pivot <laughs> rom-com or what well <laughs> yeah or anything in the light you know yeah. uh, you know just sort of staying out of the um the darkness for a while it's and, good and, yeah. we need light now you know it's uh, I, yes. I think entertainment can be a healing thing and uh there's not hollywood doesn't do a lot of comedy anymore or things like that so you yeah know. yeah it'd be really fun to um do something gonzo, you know, I don't know. Meantime, you did this on Netflix and the whole world has seen you play Jeffrey Dahmer and it's extraordinary. Um, best you. of luck going forward, Evan. Thanks, and uh, thanks for doing the actor's side. Of course, thank you. Thank you.